All right, we're on to uh, Notre Dame. I'm excited for this opportunity. I think it's a great game to have, non-conference game. You get to play at home and uh, school with such tradition as Notre Dame. Looking forward to the opportunity. I know a lot of Georgia fans have had this one marked on the schedule for a long time, and so have a lot of Notre Dame fans. So we're excited to get the opportunity. They've got a really good football team. they got a lot of respect for Coach Kelly and the job he's done and what he's built there. And their staff actually is one of the best staffs in the country. So, got good football players, and it should be a great opportunity for both teams. Kirby, is it fair to say in 17 that the game there was kind of a launching point for where you guys are now? Um, yeah, I think that helped uh, the trajectory of things. I mean, it was a big win for us. Uh, it was a big win for Jake, you know, for his, to go on the road and. Uh, play in a place like that and uh, to play well enough to win, it certainly helped things. Um, there's been a lot of games since then, too. Kirby, obviously, the Notre Dame circle is big for Rodrigo. That whole week in the scholarship. What uh, is he keeping as well as he ever has for you? I mean, I guess he's making every pitching for Pitcher. And also, um, are you doing a little bit more as far as kickoff? Because I know I think I've only given up like 13 yards of return and not just booming them all for touchbacks. Are y'all doing a little different this year? Really not doing anything different with Rod. Uh, I think Coach Fountain and his staff do a tremendous job of keeping Rod fresh, and uh, he kicks certain days of the week. Um, he's got a really good routine that he feels comfortable with, and he's been pretty consistent kicking them out of the end zone, and he's been consistent making the field goals. And I think that's a big part of what Rod's game is, is his consistency and performance. He gives you a great effort day in and day out, and he's kind of the leader of that specialist group. The emphasis on scheduling these non-conference games, home and home, what do you think they mean for the future and the uh, landscape of college football? Well, I think they're exciting for the fans. The fans enjoy these games. They want uh, you to play high-caliber opponents. They want to see uh, these kind of games and this kind of atmosphere. So it's a catch-22 between playing the lower division teams and giving them an opportunity to fund their programs versus giving the fans what they want and play, uh, you know, a big-time non-conference matchup. And uh, I like I like the idea of both. You know, I like having a mixture there. And uh, I'm excited about this game because it's the next game. Kirby, I guess we'll never know what would happen if you don't close out Notre Dame in 2017. But how much was it less – a launching pad game or more of a reflection of the improvement you guys had made over the previous year in that offseason? I think it was a little bit of both. I mean, it was a, it was giving our kids an opportunity to perform at a high level. And that was a really good football team. And, you know, we didn't play perfect. They didn't play perfect. It was a hard-fought game. Uh, both teams got better, you know, by playing that game. And that was two good football teams. You know, we were a good football team last year. They were a good football team last year. And uh, we both got good football programs. We recruited at a high level. We both got, you know, really good academics. And, you know, I think that uh, both programs are here to stay. Availability, and how do you evaluate how Kate and, and Sawyer have done at that spot? Um, Kate and Sawyer have done a good job. Uh, but Sawyer had been at his spot. So you ask him about Sally at Isaiah's spot? Yeah. yeah, Sally doesn't play where Isaiah plays. Oh, so Jamari. I got you. Yeah, I thought you said Sally. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, Sally, uh, Jamari and Cade have done a good job with his absence. I mean, Cade were up there kind of all camp. Jamari were up there all camp. As far as Isaiah's availability, I won't know much uh, till today. I mean, I'll get to watch him a little bit today. But uh, we think he's uh, coming along well. We'll find out more today. Coach, how much uh, does y'all's experience in other big games that these kids have played in, how will those ways help you in a contest like this on Saturday night? Well, the same way it will help them. You know, they played in big games. They play in a lot of big games annually. They had a you know playoff game last year against Clemson. I mean, they've got a lot of players who've played a lot of big games. So have ours. The, the guys who haven't for them and us, that'll be the biggest new experience uh, for each one of them. And uh, most of these kids nowadays are coming out of uh, high school programs where they get to play in a lot of big games. But we have, uh, especially at some positions, some guys who've played in a lot of big-time football games. You hope that helps them. But 
you know, when you look across their roster, there's there's guys that have played there for quite a while as well. Coach, I wonder uh, how it, Notre Dame's got a couple pretty good players from the Atlanta area. I wonder how often you run across them, you know, in your uh, yearly recruiting battles, and and maybe specifically on on Trimble and Hamilton are playing a lot for those guys. You remember uh, how much you were were after those fellas? Yeah, we 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 cross paths with Notre Dame. I mean, probably on two or three kids a year, um, but they they do a great job recruiting. They've got a great opportunity and product to sell, just like we do. And uh, both those two kids, we recruited really hard and got a lot of respect for both of them. They come from uh, great academic backgrounds, great families. You know, Trimble's dad played here right before I got here. It was a great player, and uh, he's a really good player. So both those guys are uh, got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, that they are getting a lot of turnovers, and they're not turning it over much. I mean, that's that's one of the key critical factors of winning football games, and they're they're beating everybody in the country at that, and that's. That probably pops out uh, very, very low, uh, not very penalized team, meaning they've got a lot of discipline, they get turnovers, and they got good players, and they execute at a high level. And uh, their system on offense is um, very tough to defend because they're very multiple in what they do, and they're aggressive on defense, and their special teams is one of the best we faced. A little bit of a... Odd question, but Senior, remember you talking about after the Kentucky game last year when you guys were struggling on the defensive line with, with bodies there that Trey Hill kind of cross-trained a little bit during that week. Um, is there any chance with what you got going on at wide receiver right now that, that you guys may have to turn to Mark Webb to kind of take some reps there because of all the injuries you have at that spot? No. No defensive guys will be at receiver. Um, coach, with a in – Brooks, what type of challenges are there with facing a talent like him who's got the, the mobile abilities there and then in your own defense? Um, so is it encouraging at all to see uh, Tyson Campbell and Eric Stokes being able to work uh, well as a pair over these over these last few weeks? Um, yeah, I'm excited about what Eric and Tyson have both done, but I'm also excited about uh, Tyreek Stevenson and DJ who continue to get better each day with their execution. Um, as far as Ian Book, he's very talented. Uh, the guy's fast, explosive. Um, he's a dual threat guy that doesn't have to be a dual threat guy. I mean, he's exactly what is hard to prepare for because when a play breaks down, you very, a lot of times you think it's a a coach or a defensive coach, you got it right. You finally got it right, and then all of a sudden he gets a 10-yard gain on a play that you got it right on. You know, you had him for a sack or you had him for a no gain. He turns it into a 10-yard gain. He has a lot of explosive plays where he scrambles to throw and scrambles to run. He's not a guy that just does one. He does both. Um, and it's frustrating. You have to be really patient because, you know, you, you want to get him as a rusher, and then when you don't get him, you get frustrated and, it goes from being a lost yardage play to being, you know, second and five. Uh, he's 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 really talented. Very impressed uh, with him as a kind of commander and, and and also as a scrambler. Coach, can you uh, update us on um, the receivers' injuries and also uh, Tyson Campbell, who left the game with a right foot? I think was reported in the press box. Yeah, I don't know much on any of those guys because, again, I haven't been able to see them. So uh, we'll see how they go today. I think uh, I think Tyler Simmons is going to be fine, um, like I talked about. Um, we think D-Rob's going to be fine. We'll find out today. Kiaris is uh, still injured and don't know if we'll be able to use him or not. Uh, and then Tyson Campbell, we, we hope to be okay as well, but won't know a lot until after the day. What's that? I would call it a lower extremity injury. Uh, with Tyson Campbell, he had more pass breakups in the Arkansas State game than he did all of last year. Is he more confident or comfortable at that cornerback position than he was a season ago? Yeah, I'd say he's more confident. Um, I think you can't help but be more confident after uh, you go through a, a rookie season and you're playing in the SEC and you're playing opposite of 
uh, D. Baker. So he got a lot of throws uh, last year. He and Stokes both did. Um, but he's a year older. He's a year stronger. He's a year more mature. He understands our system better, and uh, it allows him to play with a little more confidence. Their defensive line, and who do they remind you of, of some of your recent opponents? Well, I don't know anybody we've played recently is like them on the defensive line. They, they, they have superior size and speed combination. Um, they've got really good edge players. Their guys can get off the edge and rush really well. They do a tremendous job. they got guys that move around, um, just athletic. And they're very multiple in what they do, and they're disruptive. So I, I can't really compare them to anybody that we've played thus far up front. Maybe some individuals that we've played up front, but not, not a, a whole as a group. Uh, they do a great job, and they, they create a lot of issues for you with their movement and their pressure package, and they're really aggressive because they know they're going to score points offensively. Coach over here, uh, what, how has J.R. Reed developed as you've seen him come along, and, and what does he mean not only in the secondary but kind of just his leadership on, on the whole defensive side? Well, since he's been here since day one, he's been high character, hardworking. I mean, you get <laughs> – you get the best of Jr. every day at practice. He doesn't. Jr. doesn't take a day off, and that was when he was even not eligible to play. I mean, he was a really hard worker, and that jumped out at you. And then, you know, he performed well and played well. Uh, I don't even know what year he was at the time. I guess a sophomore when he had to play uh, in this game and some other games that year. So he's grown into a very confident, good leader, uh, and he he helps the other guys in the secondary and the other guys on the defense know how to prepare for a game. And I think in games like this, it gives them some uh, comfort in a guy that's played in a lot of football games for us. Coach, over the last handful of years in your little recruits' living rooms, how much has this specific game come up as a sales pitch, and how does a strong schedule kind of become a selling point to a recruit? Well, I think that having a strong schedule is a huge selling point. But in the SEC, I think we all got that because I really believe that the SEC schedule gives you an opportunity to play in the greatest venues in all of college football. You play in front of the largest fan bases, the largest attendance records. So you're going to get that in the SEC. This is just in addition to. This is your way to differentiate yourself from maybe other SEC schools you recruit against because you've got an opportunity to play at Notre Dame and Notre Dame at home. So those things help. Kirby, as a player or coach at Georgia, what's the biggest uh, big game atmosphere build up you can remember uh, that you've been involved with? I don't know. Uh, it's been a lot of them. I mean, since I've been here as a coach, when I was a, an assistant here as a coach and as a player, I mean, there's been a lot of big games, and I think that's what is great for the kids. I mean, you don't have a ton of top ten matchups, maybe the caliber of this one, but there's a lot of top 25 matchups been played in that stadium. So it's a great opportunity for our program, and to be on a national stage, it's a great opportunity. Going back to uh, Rodrigo, and um, two years ago when you you know you had him announce the scholarship, I guess in the locker room, was that a spur of the moment thing? And then two, you know, he gets the most cheers of anybody on the team, even Jake Fromm and all. Have you ever seen that out of kicker? And you know, why did the fans love him so much? Well, I think they love him because he's a dog through and through and he's got a great personality he loves georgia he sells georgia he's he's a tremendous asset for us but I, I i love the kid as a person because of everything he's persevered and been through um but the scholarship he we, we told him he was getting the scholarship or i told him he was getting the scholarship before the game ever happened um because he'd earned it and uh, he'd gone out and proven it and you know we thought that it would be a tight ball game and thought it might help his confidence knowing that he wouldn't have the pressure of a scholarship out there kicking he was already had it, and uh, he had won the job and uh, ended up coming out that he hit some big field goals in the game, and uh, we let everybody know afterwards, but he knew before. Hi, Coach. You mentioned um, the game atmosphere. This is supposed to be one of the most attended games um, in program history. Um, how do you expect that to impact your players' performance um, and just the overall atmosphere of the game? <clears throat> I, you know, we don't – really get into the exterior forces. I mean, what's going on outside, I mean, you can think it's going to affect our guys, but it's really not supposed to. I mean, we're, we're really playing the opponent that lines up across from us, and we even talk about playing ourselves more than anything. So I know our guys will be excited to play. I know it'll be an aw awesome atmosphere. Our fans never fail when it comes to support and being there, and it'll be a record crowd with the additional seats. But 
after all that, it's going to boil down to football, and that's what it always boils down to, who can block and tackle. And we're going to go out there today and practice blocking and tackling. Coach, is this a Notre Dame offense this year more diversified than what y'all faced two years ago? There's some similarities um, in what they've got. I think you know the quarterback's got more experience, and he's really playing well at a high level. Um, their system has similarities, uh, but they have some different players at different spots. Um, but they've got a very talented offense and got a lot of weapons they can use. And those guys, he does a great job of using his best players regardless of what personnel grouping that is. The touchdown drive right before the half against Arkansas State on Saturday, how important for you was it to see you guys sort of go out and execute that two-minute offense with sort of decision you had there? Well, it was something we work hard on. I mean, we, we want to take every opportunity that we can to score and be aggressive and try to do that with the quarterback we have and the offensive system we have. He functions well when he gets an opportunity to do that. So any opportunity we get, whether it's a defensive opportunity before the half to stop it and get it back for the offense or offense to go out and execute is big. And I thought they handled that well Saturday. Kirby, when you played them up there, you were still fairly new around here, but how, how much have the players improved at the idea of playing against the standard and not playing against the, the particular opponent that week? Um, you know, that team was very mature. I mean, that was a n new team to me starting the second year, but you look across that, that tape, offensively and defensively, there were a lot of players who had played a lot of football. So I feel like that team understood you know, how to play to a standard, and they kind of created the standard that is the standard. Um, and this team is, is following in those footsteps from the standpoint of that we got to have a standard of excellence every day at practice, and we've got to do that today, tomorrow, and the next day to have the best opportunity Saturday. Second round picks on their offensive line in 2017. What's your impressions of, of, of this group uh, in terms of the matchup for you guys? Uh, a lot of returning starters. I mean, you look at it across the board, they've got 27 game starter, 27 game starter, 14 game starter, 19 game starter. I mean, that's very similar to us when it comes to the guys that have played in big games. You look out there at their film last year, they've got basically the same offensive line with the exception of maybe one guy playing now. So I'm, I'm big. I know I'm comfortable as a coach with guys with experience. Well, they've got really good experience on the front line. They've got good offensive linemen. They're really big, and uh, they'll be the best group we've played because the guys got size, and they got athleticism, and they do a good job.